About a year and a half ago, I wrote a Medium article about how to control your IoT devices from within Reaper, which, in my opinion, is the best digital audio workstation. I showed how you can cheaply and easily build one of those old recording lamps to keep outside your studio door so folks know when to pipe down while you're spending two and a half hours trying to capture that perfect hand clap sample. The idea was the light would automatically turn on when you start recording in Reaper and automatically turn off when you stop recording. It would stay in sync with your playback. And the setup I describe in the article is not limited to lights. I actually used it to control a window fan during a few particularly hot weeks this past summer, um, but that was inversed. So when I started recording, the fan would go off to cut the noise, and when I stopped recording, it would come back on to cool us off. Anyways, a few people have reached out to me since I posted the article asking if there was any possible way to get something similar set up with Pro Tools. I happened to install Pro Tools this week to work on a completely unrelated project. It's the first time I've had it installed since Pro Tools 11, I think. Um, and I figured why not give it a whirl? Spoilers, it works. And it's only slightly more painful to set up than the Reaper version. Here's proof. All right, got my lamp, it's plugged in. Let's hit record, bam. Stop recording, good to go. So now if you stick around, I will show you how to get it set up yourself. Okay, first thing, I'm on a Mac. This is gonna be 90% the same for Windows users, but I will not be calling out the specific differences in this video. If enough people bug me, I'll follow up with a Windows specific tutorial. Here are the steps we're gonna to take to get this done. One, we're gonna configure an IoT device like a smart light or a smart socket to be controlled via HTTP. Two, install Python on your computer if it's not already there. Three, Download and configure a Python script that I wrote, which will be doing most of the hard work here. And four, configure Pro Tools to talk to that Python script when recording stops and starts. First things first, we need to set up your smart device so it's controllable via HTTP. What does that mean? It means you're gonna end up with a URL just like the normal www.whatever ones you've grown to know and love that rather than take you to a website, will turn your light on or off. There are many, many ways to get this done depending on the brand of smart device you own. Most of them are pretty hacky. I'm gonna show you how to do it using If This Then That since they already have integrations with most popular IoT brands. The only real downsides here are A, you have to sign up for yet another internet account if you don't already have one, and B, it's a slightly roundabout way of communicating with an IoT device, so it might take a little longer to turn things on or off than if you were just to use the app provided by the manufacturer. But we're talking like a few seconds worst case. For demo purposes, I'm going to be using this Wemo brand smart socket, which I've already configured admittedly, but I will walk through the rest of the process with you on this computer. Okay, welcome to the computer. We are gonna go through the process of setting up if this then that. So first thing we do, we go to ifttt.com. I'm already logged in. Uh, if you're not logged in, create an account and log in. It's free, though the free version has some limitations. Uh, it's worth paying for, it's a cool service. Next, we're gonna go to create. And you see they have a nice clean UI, if this, then that. So the this, which is the trigger we wanna add is an HTTP request. We click add and the way they do this on if this, then that, they call them webhooks. So start typing that and you'll see the webhooks option, click in there. So we're choosing a trigger. The only trigger available for the webhooks server is to receive a web request, which is exactly what we want. So click that and we're gonna connect it to our account and we're gonna create an event name. So we're gonna need a request for both on and off, whatever our smart device is. I have a lamp, so I'm gonna call my first event lamp on. And I put a little underscore in there, you can't see it. Lamp on, so I'm gonna create that trigger. Then that, so now we need something to respond to that trigger, so we click. This is where it's gonna be different based on what type of smart device you have. I have a Wemo brand smart switch, smart plug, I guess they call it. 
Um, and since we're doing the turn on integration, since I, I chose lamp on as my trigger word, we click turn on. This is just where I would choose a particular light bulb or a particular smart socket. If I have multiple, the only one I have hooked up is one called 802. That's the one sitting next to me. So I'm going to create action. So now if we receive a web request, then turn our lights on. It's that simple. We hit continue. We hit finish. If you want to give it a nicer title, go for it, but I'm just going to hit finish. All right, cool. So this is configured, but now we still don't know what the URL is. To get the URL, we're going to go into the WebSockets service page. So just click on the WebSockets logo up here. We go to settings and we're going to copy this URL. This is my secret key. Don't worry, I will have changed it by the time you have access to this video. You can try it if you want. So we're going to copy that. Let's just paste it here for now. So it's telling us how to use it. And basically all we have to do is use this extended URL with our particular trigger key. They're calling it the event name inserted into the URL. So I'm going to copy this once more, put it in a new slot. And this isn't going to do anything because I don't have an event named bracket event bracket. The only events I have, well, I only have one event right now. I only have lamp on. So I'm going to replace this with lamp on. And when I access this URL, my lamp turns on. You can't see it. I'm recording my screen, but I assure you it just went on. So that's it. So we, we fully set up our IFTT integration. We're just going to repeat the process quickly for turning it off. You can do as many of these as you want, but my script, which you'll download later, is only configured for on and off. So let's just do that. Before you move on, just make sure you copy both the on and off URLs somewhere safe. Just store them in a text file for now. All right, if you're still with me, I promise the remaining steps should go quicker. On to part two, we're gonna install Python. Python 3 specifically, don't mess that up. If you're unfamiliar, Python is just a piece of software that lets you run other software that was written in the Python programming language. The reason you need this is because I wrote the app that brokers the communication between Pro Tools and the IoT devices in Python. You're gonna be downloading my app in just a minute. First, you're gonna to wanna to make sure Python 3 isn't already installed on your machine. To do this, open the Mac app called Terminal, and when the cursor starts blinking, type the word Python 3, one word, all lowercase, and then hit enter. If it's already installed, it will print out a specific version number, starting with the number three. If it's not installed, you'll get an error message. If this is the case, just head to python.org downloads and find the appropriate installer. Again, make sure you're downloading Python 3. Once you're finished, verify that the installation worked by following the steps I just described. Again, you want to see it print out a version starting with the number three. Next, we're going to download my Python app. To do this, follow the GitHub link that will be posted either in this video or near this video, somewhere in the description. When you get there, you'll see a big green button that says code. And under that, you'll see an option to download as zip. This will let you download a zip file, which you will unzip to a folder on your desktop or in your documents, just somewhere that you'll be able to find it easily. Before we actually run anything, let me quickly explain what my app does. 
Basically, it pretends to be a hardware MIDI controller so that Pro Tools will talk to it when the recording state changes. Pro Tools is pretty particular about what controllers it wants to talk to. There are only a few options available, but fortunately it's not hard to spoof. My app is just innocently pretending to be an M-Audio hardware keyboard. So my app just runs in the background listening for these very specific start record and stop record MIDI messages from Pro Tools. When it receives one, it just makes an HTTP request to either the lamp on URL or the lamp off URL. Very simple. And now you're ready to run. To kick things off, just double click the run.command file in the same folder. As a general piece of advice, don't double click random.command files you pull off the internet. Mine's fine, I promise. If everything's configured correctly, a terminal window will pop up and dump a few lines of text. When the app is ready, you will specifically see the line MIDI to IOT, monitor running, press control C to exit. The last thing we gotta do is just tell Pro Tools how to talk to our controller. Welcome back to the computer. You can see we have Pro Tools running on the left. We have my Python application pretending to be a MIDI controller over here on the right. And we're gonna have them talk to each other now. So to do that, uh, we're gonna go to the setup menu. We're gonna go to peripherals and head to the MIDI controllers tab. Um, we can fill in any of these slots. I'm just gonna do number one since I don't have anything else set up. I'm gonna select for type, I'm gonna select M audio keyboard. This is important. Um, this is the only one that's gonna work as far as I know because the messages that Pro Tools is sending out is specific for M audio keyboards. And now we have to choose receive from and send to options. So send to, if you click it, you'll have predefined, you might have other MIDI controllers set up, but the one you're gonna to wanna to select for send to is MIDI to IOT. That's the name of my Python script. And you're gonna also need to pick something for receive from. However, my Python app does not have a virtual MIDI output, so Pro Tools doesn't see it here. So what we can do is, well, if you have another MIDI input here that works, that's you're not actively using within Pro Tools, um, that you that you want to pick, you can just pick that. But for for other folks, um, Apple actually builds in a virtual MIDI controller. So you're going to want to head to the Audio MIDI Setup app, which is which is part of Mac OS. You're going to head there, and you're going to open the MIDI Studio window, which I believe yeah shows up here. Window yeah, you can show and hide MIDI Studio. So you show MIDI Studio. There's this. MIDI device called IAC driver. That's basically just a virtual MIDI port. So what you wanna do is you wanna right click or I guess double click and click this checkbox to make the device go online. I think that worked, did that work? Yep, this should be a brighter color if it's, if it's running. So we can get rid of this. Um, we'll just hide this for now and receive from that should show up. So I, IAC driver bus one, you might have other things here, but IAC driver is the virtual MIDI port from Mac OS. So we're gonna pick that and that should be all we need to do. Let's try it out. So I'm just gonna hit record, start playback and you can see recording lamp was set to on. Set recording lamp set to on. All right, I'll have to fix that before I send this code out. If I stop, set to off, can do it again, do it again. Uh, I'll show you, I can use the function key. So function 12 for record, that works. And function 12 works again, even if playback continues, uh, the, once the recording stops, it will be set to off. I think that's it. Remember that Pro Tools will only communicate with your smart device while my app is running. So it's best to just start it when you open Pro Tools and stop it again when you're done. If you like what you saw and heard today, please check out my other videos. I'm doing all sorts of music tech stuff. I also write on Medium occasionally. I will include that link. And if you have any questions, hit me on Twitter. Thank you.